Let me throw some names at you. Travis Scott, Pop Smoke, well, I guess maybe not Pop Smoke, uh, Future, Tickle Me Elmo. All of them famous artists that got their success due to their unique turn of one style, Dark Trap. We've all heard tracks like Butterfly Effect or Mask Off or whatever hellish nightmare Tickle Me Elmo has out right now, and we've all thought the same thing. Yeah, I could totally make that. The apparent simplicity of Dark Trap makes it seem easy to replicate, but whenever you try to actually do it, you come up with something like this. Well, not anymore. I have been studying the music theory and sound selection behind these beats, and well, I'm pretty sure I figured it out. So today I'll show you how to make Dark Trap beats. With that said, let's begin. I'll separate this tutorial into five parts. The first one is which notes to use, where to place the notes in the pattern, which sounds to use, which effects to add, and five, I'll give you a free download link to a file containing pretty much everything you'll need, including scales, MIDI files, sounds, and a written summary of this video. Keep in mind, this method will teach you the music theory and sound selection behind simple dark trap beats like the ones Travis Scott, Migos, Slow Mosi, NF use. So yeah, that's what you'll learn to make today. The first thing to keep in mind is that you don't really need to know music theory. I mean, you kind of do, but I know you won't learn it, so let me just tell you this. All you really need to understand about music theory is how simple chords work and how those chords affect the melody you're going to click in. The first tip I'll give you is to pretty much exclusively use either the minor scale or the harmonic minor scale for all your melodies. Don't worry, I'll add those two in the free download link in the description. The reason you want to choose these two scales is because, well, first, use your brain. Obviously, you want to use the minor scales. And second, because of these notes right here. If if you look at popular trap songs like Butterfly Effect by Travis Scott, Bean Ballin' by Sheck West, or Jumping Out the Face by Lil Mosey, you can clearly see that these notes that are right next to each other come up all the time and well, there's a reason for that. Let's talk about trap chords. If you look at the examples I just gave you, you'll see that these patterns are pretty much just melodies without chords backing them, but that's actually not really true. You see, there might not be chords here, but these notes have to be coming from somewhere, right? Like you can't just click in things and hope they sound good. I know that's probably what you've been doing this whole time but come on let me explain there's actually a simple music theory principle that explains why the producers choose to use these notes and why they work so well let's start with the melody of Lil Moses jumping out the face Here you can see that the melody is pretty much just one bar long and uses only four notes. If you take these notes and bring the B up an octave, you can see that there's actually chords hidden in here. If I delete this note, it turns into an E minor. And if I bring that note back and delete the G, it turns into an E sus2, which is a chord apparently. But that's not really important here. I mean, it is, but I'll go back to that later. What's important is the two notes that didn't move, this E and that B. This seven note separation is very often used in every type of beat. That's because both major and minor chords and a bunch of other chords have a seven note separation between the first note on the chord and the last one. The difference being that in major chords, the middle note is four steps above from the first note and in a minor chord, the second note is only three steps above it. So you'll want to use the seven note separation in pretty much all your beats especially in these dark ones but we'll get into that later okay so now we know the first two notes to use but how about the rest the rest is actually pretty simple remember the main reason why we chose either of those minor scales if you look at jumping out the faces pattern you can clearly see that the other notes used in this pattern are the closest two notes that are right next to each other in this case that's G and F sharp obviously this isn't always the case but it's definitely worth writing down as a rule of thumb I have tried applying this rule to a bunch of dark trap beats and more often than not it works so let's try applying this rule to our other two examples If we take the notes of Bin Balling by Sheck West and rearrange them, you can see that the rule still applies here. Bass note is E, seven spaces above it is B, and the closest two note duo would be both F sharp and G and B and C, since the upper note is actually part of a two note duo, which was not the case in Jumping Out the Face. Let's do the same for Butterfly Effect by Travis Scott. The bass note is G sharp and seven space above it is D sharp. In this case, the closest two note duo would be both A sharp and B 
in D sharp and E. Here you can see that although the last one is true, instead of using an A sharp, it uses a C sharp. This shows that this rule can be and should be broken, so don't always stick to it, but again, definitely consider it. It becomes even more clear if you change the key of all these songs to be the same. The pink notes are the bass note and the note 7 notes above it, and the brown notes are the notes using the closest pair of notes. Still don't see it? How about like this? Here the bass note of all those patterns has been set as the same one. Here it becomes almost funny how this rule applies so well, obviously with the exception that on butterfly effect there is one note out of the rule. But then again, that can and should happen from time to time. That was a long explanation, so here's a quick recap. Step 1. Choose a minor or harmonic minor scale. Step 2. Choose your bass note and place a note 7 notes above that one. Place notes on the closest set of 2 notes right next to each other. So basically, that's what you want to start with. This is not a rule as much as a reference point, I guess. So yeah, now you know which notes to use, but how do you know where to put them? Well, here's the unnecessarily long explanation. Going back to our examples, we can see that there are mainly two places where you can put your notes, either right on beats, like the green notes, or halfway there, like the purple notes. Obviously, you can place them wherever you want, but at least consider using this as a rule of thumb. There's no clear way to start your beat as a jumping out the face starts with a purple note and the other two start with a green note, but usually you'll want to start with a green note. And there's also no clear rule on how many purple or green notes you should add, but I do know one thing, it looks like purple Purple notes come way less often than green notes, the pattern of bean balling doesn't even have any. And also, if you use purple notes, try to follow them with a green note, as that's the case in pretty much all of the examples I've tried this in. And lastly, it looks like you should use about 4 notes on every bar. You can also see the whole pattern is between 1 and 2 bars long, as repetition is pretty important in dark trap beats. You can go longer than that, but if you do, you usually won't change much in the extension. The last thing I want to point out is all of these patterns seem to go down in the end like they start kind of in the middle then they go up and then they end up going down so try to keep that in mind well that was a long explanation so here's a quick recap one your pattern should be around one or two bars long use only about four notes per bar try to use primarily notes that hit right on beat with a few variations if appropriate the last notes of the pattern should be going in a downward progression okay so now we know which notes to use kind of and we know where to put them kind of the last thing we need to know is which sounds to use. And that question also has a pretty long answer. Well, well, actually not really, there's there's nothing I could possibly say that will fit every combination you could use for this other than use a bell, but there's so much more to that than just that. Instead I'll just show you my favorite presets and why I use them. First thing is you need to know what you're looking for. For example, if it's like a grungier sound you will want a bunch of layers, but if it's a cleaner sound you will want less layers but a bunch of effects. I have a lot of song breakdowns in my channel where I break down the sound selection in theory behind a ton of popular beats, so if you know what kind of sound you're looking for you can just go check that out, I'll leave a link in the description. If you're still not sure what kind of sound you want, well here are some suggestions. For the main melody, I love the bass one, I don't know if it's Rog, Rouge or whatever one shot kit, it has a bunch of clean samples that can be easily manipulated into something hard. If you don't have money to pay for that, you can try downloading one of delicious free one shot kits, I recommend Silhouettes, it also has a bunch of great bell samples. I also love the mallets on x 2 and a bunch of presets on Omnisphere of course, my favorite free bell be ST is definitely this ample one. You can also of course just use the piano and add a ton of effects to it. The counter melody and ambience effects you want to add depend heavily on what feeling you're going for. For example, Lil Moses jumping out the face uses a simple flute pattern to give it more of a wavy feel, but in NF's When I Grow Up they add a whole ass orchestra to make it more cinematic. So what should you add? Again, if you kinda know what feeling you're going for, you could check some of my other videos, but as a rule of thumb, I always add these three things. One, some sort of vocal chop for ambience, like this, or this.
a pad. This variates from a simple sine wave all the way to a whole orchestra depending on what you're going for. And lastly, I add some layers to the main melody which could be either some distorted sound to make the bell feel fatter or a higher pitch version to make the pattern less boring from time to time. So yeah, now you know how to make a dark trap beat. If you want, there's a free download link to everything I mentioned and used in this video in the description. I upload tutorials and song breakdowns pretty much twice a week. So if you want more of whatever this is, you should subscribe. So yeah, that's how to make a dark trap beat, I guess. Thanks for watching and as always, see ya. God, that was a long ass video. 21 minutes, oh my...